Welcome to this Bitranger tips and tricks video. Number 1. Remember that the Bitranger is a stereo instrument, which is really cool. You can get interesting stereo signals when patching the MUX 1 and 2 inputs, which affect the sound on the left and right ears accordingly. Patching something into an inhibit input will mute that ear while the signal is high. Number 2. Syncing a Teenage Engineering Pocket Operator to the Bitranger is simple. The Pocket Operator expects a stereo signal with clock on the tip or left ear and audio on the sleeve or right ear. Accessing the left and right channel outputs on the Bitranger is done by using the override inputs. So you could send a clock or divider signal into the left override and leave the right one unconnected to send the regular right channel audio from the Bitranger into the Pocket Operator. You then just have to connect a stereo cable from the Bitranger's audio output to the pocket operator's input. Number 3. Syncing other analog equipment to the Bitranger, like a modular synth for example, is done via the clock input and output mini jack sockets on the left and right sides of the unit. For the clock out you can even choose a speed or actually a subdivision of the internal or incoming clock with a divided by 64 and divided by 2 switch. Number 4. The utility belt section lets you access an external incoming clock using those small patch cables. You can even override the clock going to the clock out mini jack socket, so you can use the bit ranger as a flexible clock processor. The CON 1 and 2 sockets can be connected to the second mini jack socket on each side, letting you feed other signals in or out of the bit ranger. For example, you could send a reset signal from an external sequencer into the CON 2 port and connect that to the bit ranger's reset input to reset all your gear at the same time. The XOR sockets accept two clock signals and output a high signal whenever only one incoming signal is high. Number 5. Inputs on the bit ranger are usually weighted from left to right so an incoming signal will affect the destination more when patched to a right side socket than to a left side socket. You can of course patch more than one signal into those inputs to mix them at different strengths. Number 6. This plastic piece here can be removed to attach upcoming expansion boards to the Bitranger. Number 7. The byte section is great to create stepped CV patterns, but you might have noticed that there isn't an output on the top panel, only one on the right side with a mini jack socket. If you want to use the byte sequence in your internal patch though, and not send it out to another analog instrument, you can simply use one of the already patched byte inputs as an output too. Number 8. The bend ports lets you access the circuit of the oscillators at a different point, controlling their speed via resistance. There are some light dependent resistors, or short LDRs, shipped with your bit rangers, which you can for example patch in there to control the oscillator frequency with light. Number 9. Replacing the battery is best done carefully with a small screwdriver. Number 10. Playing the bit ranger in the woods increases your happiness level by at least 300%. Try it out. <laughs> <laughs> 